Hey guys, just wanted to take a minute and show you something that I happened to cross working with SAS and Compass the other day. It is nothing new. I think it's been around for a while and actually existed as a third party project and was rolled into the Compass core. Um, I don't know when, but um, I'm surprised I haven't worked with it until now and wanted to show it to you real quick. It is working with image sprites. I don't know about you, but they're oftentimes a thorn in my side. Um, not the best uh, with the graphics processors, but usually if I'm working with a comp, I'll kind of, you know, solo out the, the icon and create a new document and drag a version of the icon in there, drag another version next to it and save it down. Um, it's just always kind of a pain in the butt. And I've used other programs that you can drag your icons into and it'll kind of align them properly and then, you know, even give you some CSS for you to put in your style sheet and, and work with it that way. And it, I'm done with that. Uh, since I found this, it, uh, I'll probably use this uh, for quite a while. So let's just jump straight in and I'll show it to you. Uh, I'm going to create just a, a super basic SAS compass project. Nothing special going on here. Super bare bones. Um, so I'm just going to create a compass. Create. Whoa. Sprite test. Um, I'll open it up so you can see what's going on in there. The configuration file, it's got some basic SAS files and the style sheets that it compiles out to. Like I said, very bare bones. And I'll just drag this into Sublime here. Real quick, just do some configuration so it's easier for us to look at. And line comments, turn those off too. Here, change directory into sprite tests. And this is working with Compass manually. Uh, likely you're using something like Live Reload or CodeKit. That's totally cool. And we're pulling. So open up our screen here, and this is just here by default. I'm going to rip it all out. Don't care about it. So, <clears throat> just as an example here, um, we'll pretend we had a full-blown website going here. An images folder. Create another folder. Icons. And just drag a set of icons I was recently working with in here. Uh, they follow a naming convention. Doesn't need to. Calendar on. Calendar. Whatever. So, um, here's how I work them, you know, you have to, the way I do them is I save them out individually and then usually I'll kind of, you know, mold those up into one. So, if you don't work with them this way, it, it, pr this method probably won't work the best, but check this out. Import to your images folder, icons, and grab all of the PNG files. Once I hit save, this should, over here, rip through all these, combine them into one, and that's cool right off the bat, that's cool. But what's really powerful about this is that Compass will map these out for you. So it'll map their you know X and Y values so you can use them. So there's a couple different ways you can work with this. And first is you can include all icons sprites and I'll go over this in just a second and what this will do will generate all the classes based on your image names and you can use your you can attach them to you know any element with their class name so let's take a look at this and what it's done is it's basically set up a base here of you know icons music on is that icon and then sets up these class names and sets up the base with just that icon and then it goes through each one, maps its position and creates the class for you. That's totally fine, you can work it that way and then you would just apply you know, that class to your element. What I like to do though, comment this out, make sure it's out of there, cool. What I like to do is this, um, say I've got like a nav going on, li, let's just say messages 
for example. And then all I need to do here is include icons sprite, pass in the image name, save over here, and it'll generate it out for me. Um, just a bit on this naming convention here. It is a little weird how it works, but once you get it, it totally makes sense. Um, the dash sprite is your important part, and the piece before it is your folder name. So since I created a folder here called icons, everything that I want to access in this folder needs to be um, named with icons in front. If I was to create a new folder out here called navigation, or social, or whatever, it would be the same thing, except I would replace it with its folder name and it would get access to it. Uh, so how about the on states? Basically just the same. If I were to do a hover, call this messages on, it'll generate it. And then another cool thing you can do if your icons are not always the same dimension, which most times they will be when you're working with a sprite, they're always going to be nice same dimensions, you know, 30 pixels by 30 pixels, whatever. But in here, uh, the design wasn't wasn't prepped perfectly so if you were to use this a lot of times what you might see is it's gonna start repeating into the into the next icon or it won't center properly so if you need to access the actual width of the image there's this awesome width function in here um, and, and you would set this like normal like if I set with 20 pixels in here it would still it would still come out with 20 pixels but what's super handy is I can actually get the real width of that icon by using icons sprite width Is that right? yeah. and then pass in the image name save and see it changed to 28 pixels you can also do the same with height so let's change this it'll also grab the height so that's super super powerful uh, you don't need to worry about going and, and copying values anywhere as long as you know the image name you can get away with a lot of stuff in here and it saves a ton of time so hopefully that helps you out thanks